Welcome, friends, to our exciting journey through the work of one of Hollywood's brightest and most talented actors, Sean Penn. Today, we'll delve into the world of his unforgettable roles, peek behind the scenes of filming locations, and discover fascinating facts about this outstanding artist's life. Are you ready to immerse yourself in the world of cinema with Sean Penn? Then let's begin. Justin Penn, known as Sean Penn, was born in Santa Monica, California, into the family of actor and director Leo Penn and actress Eileen Ryan. His older brother is musician Michael Penn, and his younger brother, actor Chris Penn, passed away in 2006. His father was Jewish, the son of immigrants from Merkin, Lithuania, and his mother was of Irish and Italian descent. Penn grew up in a secular household in Malibu, California, and attended Malibu Park Junior High School and Santa Monica High School. He began making short films with some of his childhood friends, including actors Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen, who lived nearby. The young actor's first marriage was to the lovely Elizabeth McGovern, his co-star in the film Racing with the Moon. Penn began his acting career on television, making a brief appearance in the 112th episode of Little House on the Prairie on December 4, 1974, directed by his father, Leo Penn. After his film debut in the drama taps and numerous roles in films in the 1980s, including Fast Times at Ridgemont High and Bad Boys, Penn garnered critical acclaim for his roles in crime dramas like At Close Range, State of Grace, and Carlito's Way. He rose to prominence as a leading actor after the drama Dead Man Walking, earning his first Academy Award nomination and a Silver Bear for Best Actor at the Berlin Film Festival. Penn received two more Oscar nominations for Woody Allen's comedy drama Sweet and Lowdown and the drama I Am Sam, then won his first Academy Award for Best Actor in 2003 for Mystic River and his second in 2008 for Milk. He also won the Best Actor Award at the Cannes Film Festival for Nick Cassavetti's film She's So Lovely and two Volpe Cups for Best Actor at the Venice Film Festival for the indie film The Pledge and the drama 21 Grams. Penn made his directorial debut with the drama film The Indian Runner, followed by the dramatic film The Crossing Guard and the detective film The Pledge. All three were well received by critics. Penn directed one of the 11 segments of the anthology film 11 Foot 0901 September 11th, made in response to the September 11th attacks. His fourth feature film, the survival biographical drama Into the Wild received critical acclaim and two Oscar nominations. In addition to his work in film, Penn has been involved in political and social activism, including criticism of the George Bush administration, contacts with the presidents of Cuba and Venezuela, and humanitarian work after Hurricane Katrina in 2005 and the earthquake in Haiti in 2010. Sean Penn is one of Hollywood's most respected actors when it comes to his talent, but when his personal life comes into question, it's a whole different story. Throughout his career, Penn has made headlines for all the wrong reasons. In 2018, he was widely criticized for smoking during a late night performance. However, considering the actor's penchant for aggressive behavior, this is rather mild. Penn is known as an actor and director who can be a nightmare to work with, and some of these true stories about Sean Penn are simply horrifying. From his infamous brushes with the law to his history of aggressive behavior, these nightmare stories about Hollywood's notorious bad boy are not to be missed. This story first became public when Penn filed a defamation lawsuit against director Lee Daniels. Daniels mentioned Penn while defending actor Terrence Howard, stating, Terrence ain't done nothing different than Marlon Brando or Sean Penn, and all of a sudden he's some F asterisk and demon. One of the most disturbing stories involved his wife. Penn met singer and songwriter Madonna on the set of her music video Material Girl in January 1985. They married on Madonna's 27th birthday, August 16, 1985. Penn was 25 the next day. The two starred in the critically panned film Shanghai Surprise, directed by Jim Goddard, and Madonna dedicated her third studio album, True Blue, to Penn, 
calling him in the liner notes the coolest guy in the universe. Their marriage was marred by Penn's harsh treatment of the press. Madonna filed for divorce in December 1987 but withdrew the papers two weeks later. In January 1989, Madonna filed for divorce again and reportedly withdrew a complaint of assault against Penn after an incident at their Malibu, California home over New Year's weekend. Penn allegedly struck Madonna several times during their marriage. Madonna defended her ex-husband, saying, Sean never hit me, tied me up, or physically assaulted me, and any report to the contrary is completely outrageous, malicious, reckless, and false. However, skeptics point to the fact that there are indeed reports of Madonna calling the police regarding Penn in 1988. Lieutenant Bill McSweeney from the Los Angeles police even admitted, I could barely recognize her as Madonna. She was crying, her lip was bleeding, and she had obviously been struck. Penn is known to take his roles very seriously, but in his 1989 Vietnam War film, he took his method acting a bit too far nearly causing actor John Leguizamo to walk off. As Leguizamo recalls, my character resists, and Sean has to give me a slap to make me comply. And, of course, Sean doesn't believe in stage slaps because he's too method for that shit, so he slaps me for real. We're on take 13, and my face is here, and you can't even understand the dialogue I'm saying. And director Brian De Palma goes, we gotta do it again, John, it was out of focus, so it's slap and slap, and I'm about to walk out, and then they cut the scene from the movie. Throughout his career, Penn has been a top-tier star who seemingly despised the limelight, which was always quite an odd mindset for a globally renowned celebrity. And this mindset was fully showcased when he caught a fan taking unauthorized photos of him. Apparently, catching Penn off guard was a terrible idea, as this fan realized when Penn turned to him and aggressively exclaimed, Do we look like fucking zoo animals to you? I will make you eat your phone. Get the fuck out of here. Well, Sean, message received. In a 1996 Rolling Stone article titled Sean Penn, the Cool Fool, journalist Chris Mundy describes witnessing very strange behavior when Penn decided he didn't need to go to the bathroom to. Mundy recalls the bizarre interaction. He tells anecdotes, tells stories, finishes peeing. Almost. I need another bottle, says Penn. He puts another vessel in front of him and the room erupts in laughter. He smirks with a huge bladder and a second bottle is placed in his left hand before it quickly disappears beneath the tablecloth. Relief. Woody Harrelson and Sean Penn were involved in a legendary prank war, but Penn put an end to it when his prank on the set of You're Only As Good As Your Next could have easily led to Harrelson's death. According to IMDB, driving 40 miles through the Australian outback, where their movie was being filmed, Penn pretended to get stuck, and Harrelson got out to push him. Metavoice says, Sean threw it into four-wheel drive and literally left Woody in the dust, stranded in the middle of the night, with no food, no water, and no way to get home except on foot. Eventually, on his way to work, he was picked up. In 1987, while filming Colors, Penn caught second billed actor Jeffrey Klein attempting to steal some photos of Penn and his co-star Robert Duvall. Unfortunately for Klein, his attempts didn't go unnoticed by Penn, who punched him several times and only stopped when physically pulled away. Penn was sentenced to 60 days in jail but ultimately served just over 30 days for the assault. In 1987, Penn was pulled over for reckless driving and he had a blood alcohol content of 0.11, which was 0.03 over the legal limit. And what's worse, thanks to Penn's wealth and fame, his blatant drunk driving was reduced to reckless driving. Given his aggressive reputation, it's no surprise that Penn reacted too sharply when suddenly confronted by a professional celebrity photographer. In 2009, Penn agreed to 36 hours of anger management and 300 hours of community service after pleading no contest to assaulting paparazzi Jordan Dawes. Dawes also received an undisclosed settlement, to which his lawyer stated, all net proceeds from the settlement will be donated to charitable organizations supporting victims of domestic violence and victims of the Haiti earthquake. This statement was seen as a sign of Dawes standing up to Penn, who openly advocated for the crisis in Haiti. 
Penn's interview with Mexican cartel boss El Chapo in 2016 drew significant criticism, despite not being the first time Penn interviewed a controversial figure. However, the fact that Penn was willing to sit down and talk with someone responsible for thousands of deaths truly highlights how skewed Penn's sense of morality was. One person Penn had a positive relationship with was former Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez. During Chavez's two-decade presidency, he faced sharp criticism for being a socialist dictator, and while opinions on Chavez vary, Penn expressed clear support and admiration for the man. In 2010, Penn said, Every day this elected leader is called a dictator here, and we just accept it and accept it. And this is mainstream media. There should be a bar by which one goes to prison for these kinds of lies. Right. Penn called for imprisoning American journalists for criticizing a foreign leader. In 2016, Charlize Theron and Sean Penn made headlines at the Cannes Film Festival when they noticeably kept their distance from each other despite both promoting The Last Face and being involved romantically a year earlier when the film went into production. While Theron remained silent on what led her to ghost him, sources close to the couple explained that Charlize refuses to tell anyone the details, but they had a fight that left her in complete shock. Later, Sean blamed alcohol and begged her not to leave him. Given his history, this explanation seems plausible. In 2013, Penn's son Hopper proved that parents' actions can indeed reflect on their children. While out for a stroll with his old man, Hopper dealt with paparazzi in true Sean Penn 1980 style. With cameras rolling, Hopper shoved the photographer and began viciously berating and cursing at him. The photographer didn't press charges, and Hopper publicly apologized, saying, I deeply regret my choice of words, but not before slightly defending his response, stating, paparazzi were harassing me and making me feel like an animal under threats and attack and that's a wrap studying sean penn's talent and contribution to world cinema despite being quite an unconventional and sometimes overly aggressive personality he has gifted us with many great films